Hi everyone, Eva here. Hope you are all having a fantastic day. As usual, today being Friday, I am going to be answering one mom's question in the My Sleeping Baby Facebook community in honor of our Friday focus question. Now, before I address the question, I just wanna quickly remind everyone that I have a free live webinar coming up this Monday evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I'm gonna be talking all about sleep training and specifically some of the biggest mistakes that people make when they attempt to sleep train their infant, their toddler, their preschooler, and why it might not have worked and what you can do to ensure that you're successful when you attempt it the next time around. Or for those of you who haven't attempted any type of sleep plan, you're definitely gonna to wanna to tune in so that you know what to do and what not to do. So I'm gonna be posting a link below so that those of you who haven't registered can sign up because the spots are going to be limited. So that being said, let's move on and talk and discuss today's question, which is from a mom named Danielle. And her question is, hello mamas, is there an age when babies start to fall asleep on their own without being rocked? My son is only two months, so I'm not expecting, I'm not expecting it now, but wondering if, if there is a point, if, oh, sorry, hold on a second. Let me read this again. Um, is there an age when babies start to fall asleep on their own without being rocked? My son is only two months, so I'm not expecting it now, but I'm wondering um, if this is part of sleep training at four months or am I just making bad habits? Really, really good question, Danielle. So let me, let me just address this question in a few different steps here. So number one, your two month old is in what's called, or what's notoriously called the fourth trimester. The fourth trimester basically refers to the first three months of a baby's life where he's transitioning to life outside the womb. And it is very normal during this particular phase for a baby to be very needy, right? I mean, they were living in the womb for nine months and this big world is still very, very new to them. And so, that's why you often want to spend those first few months doing your best to mimic the womb as much as possible, which is going to be inherently calming and, <clears throat> and soothing to your baby. And so if your baby in this stage needs to be rocked to sleep, needs to be held to sleep, needs to be fed to sleep, that is all totally fine. Now, that being said, I just want to, you know, I wanted to start off as, in terms of, you know, default, it's no problem. That being said, very often we underestimate what these little babies can do. And so while we are obviously not going to be doing any kind of behavioral sleep training at this age, very often if you put a baby under the right conditions in this age range down into his crib or bassinet, either awake or somewhat awake, he may surprise you and he may actually be able to pull off falling asleep either on his own or sort of on his own. And so while, as I said, it's no problem to be helping your little newborn baby to sleep, I always encourage parents to try maybe once a day to put their little ones down, either awake or somewhat awake, drowsy but awake, and see what they can do because the more independence that they're able to build up in the sleep department, the better that they can get at falling asleep without all this assistance, then there's a much greater chance when your baby gets older that you can avoid some potential sleep problems. Now, this isn't always possible with every single baby, right? I just wanna put this out there. This is something that you can try, but if you have a very fussy, high needs baby that, for all intents and purposes, I guess is struggling to adjust to life outside the womb, then this might not be successful. And that's okay. You don't need to make yourself crazy trying to get your fussy, high needs, newborn or two month old or three month old baby into the bassinet awake or somewhat awake. If it's not gonna happen, don't worry about it. But the good news is that the vast majority of babies in this 
in this particular phase for that matter, are not high needs and fussy and colicky. Under the right conditions, they're okay. And they may actually be able to pull this off. So, you know, if, if, if you have a fairly easy going baby in this age range, I would strongly encourage you to try giving your baby a little bit of space and see what he or she can do. Put him or, him or her down, either a little bit awake, somewhat awake, maybe all the way awake. And if they're gonna fuss a little bit, you know, make some little grunting noises, that's totally fine, but they may actually surprise you. Now, that being said, that brings me to, I guess, the, the last part of how I wanna address this question. Let's say that you've given it a try, and for one reason or another, it's just not happening. Your two month old, three month old, one month old for that matter, is just not able to go down without, without assistance. And as I said, it's no problem. What it just means is that when your little one reaches that four to six month mark, you will be able to start teaching him or her how to fall asleep independently. Because by that age, assuming your little one is, is healthy, um, again, four to six months corrected, behavioral sleep training is completely age appropriate. And so if you are really struggling in the sleep department and it's taking you forever to get your little one down to sleep and your little one is waking up frequently throughout the night, not because he's hungry anymore, but because he needs all this help to fall back to sleep, then that's when some behavioral sleep training can absolutely help you out in that department. So I hope that this clarified things. So to, to answer your question, are you making bad habits, Danielle, because you're helping your two month old fall asleep? No, absolutely not. As I said, your little one is still in that fourth trimester and it's very normal for him to need some help. That being said, I would strongly encourage you to try maybe just once a day, putting him down in his bassinet, drowsy but awake. So, you know, somewhat asleep, somewhat awake and see if he can pull it off because there is a fair chance that he will surprise you positively. <laughs> so I hope that this was helpful and that you all have a fantastic day and wonderful weekend. And once again, friendly reminder about my free webinar coming up this coming Wednesday evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I'm going to be talking all about sleep training and the do's and don'ts and what to do and what not to do to ensure that it actually works. Fantastic. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.